Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Today I thought we'd make a very simple little cane just to show you that you can really just have a bit of a play and just make it up as you go along which is what I'm planning to do. Doing kaleidoscopes is wonderful because you don't have to get a particularly um, perfect cane. Whatever you do is going to work out really nicely when you kaleidoscope it. The main thing to do is to make sure you've picked good colours. So for what we're doing today, I'm working in Fimo Soft and I've gone for quite a muted um, colour palette. So I've gone for Pearl, Lilac, Aqua, Windsor Blue and Royal Violet. And what I've done is I have done myself a little Natasha bead with this colour combination first, just to check out that I was happy with it in a cane combination. And that's a tip I give in one of my videos and I'll put a link to that at the bottom. We need very little equipment for what we're doing today. Pasta machine as normal to help condition and get your clay into nice even sheets. Some wet wipes in case your tools or hands get dirty. Then I've got a tissue blade. Obviously we need that for cutting thin slices of our cane. Blunt ended knitting needle. I use this a lot just for smoothing out between any joins in the canes. Craft knife always comes in handy. Tile to bake on. And then just a little piece of grease proof wax or baking sheet just to work on just to move your piece around when we get to that stage. Some clay rollers, different sizes and a measuring sheet. This is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. Okay let's get started. So I've conditioned all my clays and made sure they've gone through the pasta machine and they're nice and soft and it's a very hot day here today so they are incredibly soft. I'm going to put the blue and the dark, or well, both blues to one side for a minute and I'm going to make a Skinner blend out of these three. Now obviously I could put this through the pasta machine and do it very neatly or seeing as the clay is very squidgy I'm just going to create myself a very roughed triangular shape just by pressing down on this. I don't know whether you can see but I'm pressing down on the corners therefore creating a triangle. So that's going to be one end. I'm going to have this nice royal violet at the other end. And then the lilac is going to go in between the two. If you've never done a Skinner blend before or you're not sure what it is we're doing I do have a video showing you how to do a Skinner blend and again I will put the link to that at the bottom of these instructions. But the important thing when you're doing a Skinner blend is to have a diagonal line going through because what we're going to do we're going to constantly fold bottom to top, bottom to top and I'll end up with all pearl on this side and then going more and more over to end up with all of this violet on this side. Some form of roller, um, this is just a little clay roller. I've just rolled it slightly so to make it easier to go through the pasta machine. So I'm putting it through the pasta machine that way in and I'm going to put it through on setting number two on my machine which is the second thickest setting. So it comes out like that, it comes out like that and then I'm going to constantly fold bottom to top as I put it back through the machine. So I'll bring you back when I've got that blended nicely. So there we go, there's our nicely blended bit of clay. You can spend longer if you want to do it to get an even smoother blend, but I'm quite happy with what I've got so far. Now I don't want to have too much in the way of length when I'm working on my piece, so I'm going to chop those down and layer these up one on top of the other. Pinch those ends together to make sure they're nicely met and then put it back through the pasta machine that way down on setting number two. So there we go, there's our nice blended sheet and now I'm going to put it through, back through the pasta machine on setting number 9 which is my thinnest setting. Um, either work your way all the way down one setting at a time or if you know your pasta machine is good and can take it um, then like me go straight to your lowest setting. So here's our nice long thin sheet of clay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go work from one end and just concertina it backwards and forwards and I'm working probably about just under an inch in width so about sort of two, two and a quarter centimetres. Okay, so once that's done, I'm just going to make 
that's slightly neater because we are doing a kaleidoscope cane so I want to make it as neat as I can so that from the, this stage onwards we're going to get a nice even cane and then I'm going to chop it in two because the theory I'm working on um, don't worry about the air gaps in there, we'll get that out in the next stage we do. If you've been doing yours perfectly at home, you shouldn't have any air gaps in if you fold it really nicely and press those concertinas down. So the theory I'm working on is when we're kaleidoscoping, if you've got a single blend and just reorientate way one goes, so one goes that way, one goes that way, it kaleidoscopes and gives you a really nice effect. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put one piece on one side and I'm just going to make two separate canes out of these. So I'm just pressing in you see just pressing in the corners so this is going to give me more of a round cane for that one and I'm going to take our dark blue that we conditioned earlier and I'm going to put this through the pasta machine to give myself a nice long thin sheet about setting number probably setting number three or four and I'm just going to push it thinner at one end with my fingers and it's already about the right height so that I now know when it goes through the pasta machine, if I put it through that way, it'll come out into a nice long thin strip. So I put that through on setting number four, and then I can take my clay. Using the tissue blade as a ruler. You can just curl that one round. So I've just done one layer of clay all the way around. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my roller, this is the smaller one, and I'm pressing down into it. I'm just going to move those over so it joins up. The great thing about clay, if you see anything happening that you don't like, you can just change it. So I'm pushing really hard down, so I've created a groove. Then we'll take a little bit of our blue clay, again that was conditioned earlier, so I've just taken off a chunk of it and I'm going to roll it and I want to get a piece that's going to be big enough to fit in there, same width, that's fine, doesn't matter what, what um, size it is, whatever you're doing is absolutely fine, I'm just going to pull over the top there Hold that top and bottom and we've created ourselves a nice little triangular cane with a little bit of a blue insert so that's one of our canes but we've still got this part to do so this one I'm going to do completely differently I'm going to pull up and change the shape of this into a triangle by pushing in along the tops both sides and then pulling it up there and it what will tend to happen is that the bits I've pulled will go longer so I need to pull these bits out to go with it and then if you press down onto your tile while pushing down onto the bottom bits you can even out your cane so you end up with a triangular shape but that's nicely covered around and then we'll take some more of this blue clay which hopefully will just about fit round not quite so what we're going to do I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine on setting number five so it's slightly thinner and let's see if it works now There we go. So that's our next one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the shape of that and I'm going to put it insert another blue bit, but I'm going to do it down this side. I'm going to take my roller here and just press in, but also pull round. I'm going to pull round both sides. So you can see it's completely gone round the side of the roller there. So that now when I twist and pull, give myself quite a big round shape there. So I'll take some more of this blue, roll it, same thing, so it's the right size to fit in. I'm not going to close it up this time. So there we go. So we've now got our two elements, they're roughly the same size. And I'm going to put these together to form a triangular shape. So let's put them so that two bits are there together. I am going to got a bit of a gap can you see there I've got a gap so I'm going to create a triangular shape with the blue so 
I've just made a rough triangular shape. Let's see if we can fit that in. We can. Take off any excess. And I'm just going to, with this tiny little bit of blue I've got left, I'm going to take my knitting needle and I'm going to create a channel down the outside here. And then we'll do something similar with some of the dark blue that we've got left. So that'll be a slightly bigger channel. And I'm going to put it in it's asymmetrically, so not opposite that, but somewhere up towards the point here. And the great thing about this is you can just play around, create all sorts of channels and grooves for yourselves, and just sit the clay in. Don't, don't necessarily follow exactly what I'm doing. So obviously you can if you want to. So now I have a roughly triangular shape, so I'm going to force that more triangular, and then we'll just start working on this. So what I'm doing is I'm just pressing in with my hands and then pulling it longer. And as with most of my kaleidoscopes, if we keep pulling down along each length as you turn, you will end up with an equilateral triangle. So I'll just carry on doing that for a moment. measuring sheet here so I can get it the right size and then I can make sure that each, each side is exactly the same so I'm actually aiming for about an inch here as this is an inch measuring sheet and when I'm doing this I'm not just looking at the bottom to make sure that's right but I'm also thinking about where this top line is and making sure that this is centered over my cane. So I think that's going to be about right. So we'll just chop down the middle and see what we've got. So that's our first bit of kaleidoscoping. Or we can put it that way around. Or we can put it that way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put half to one side to have a play with later. I'm going to chop off where I can see that I've actually got distortion from the end and we use that on um, something else underneath the bead or something like that. Just going to make sure that's that. And I'm going to decide which way I'm going to put it together. So I'll put it together so this bit towards me is the top of the point. So I'm then for going to make this bottom smaller. So rather than being an equilateral triangle now, I'm pressing down. So then I'm going to press my thumb this way. And then press down with my finger this way. So I've made it a much narrower triangle. So that now, when I chop down through, center him over, so I've got about middle point. When I chop down through here, I can start putting these together and I'll put it together this way to begin with. Make sure that both top and bottom are matching up. And then press that back down into an equilateral triangle. And I'll just reduce this down now to it's the right size. I like to work in about three quarters of an inch, so about three of these squares. Um, it just gives you a nice size when you're doing the um, kaleidoscoping for things like beads. work on one bit at a smaller bit at a time. OK, 
Okay, so I've got I've got my cane um, done. So now I need to take some slices off, and six slices will be enough to make a hexagon. When you're cutting slices, it's more important to be consistent than thin. So don't necessarily worry about being overly thin, but do try and make sure, if you can, that they are consistent. Just going to chop him off and take six slices. And then with our slices, we can start putting them together. Now I have two choices. It's very hot and sticky today, it's about 30 degrees, so it's not really good claying weather. So if, if yours does the same, um, you can just put it in the fridge for a little while to cool it off, um, which would have been a better idea, but we're just going to go with it. So put your two pieces together. And that should give you your three. And then just repeat for the other side. And then put your two sides together. And you end up with a pattern. And also to show you that if you have problems, um, if you have problems not just picking it up but actually putting your pieces together, obviously I did those in my hands but I've been doing this for quite a long time so it, for me it's second nature. Um, what you can do is use a piece of paper so I will do that. I'm just going to get this one together to start with. It's usually quite easy to put two pieces together. If, you, if it's easier from this point on, then start working on, as I say, on a piece of um, greaseproof paper. Turn it up that way so it curls away from me. So it is easier at times to have a piece of paper to work on. But I would still recommend doing two pieces at a time. So do your first two pieces in your hand. Or on the tile. And then you can start them together so you can so I can see I need that piece to go on this side same thing just knit him off and then if you hold your piece of paper with a bit on the piece of paper like that you should be able to line up your design so that's the design the other way around so those are your two designs from that very simple cane and remember, I've still got all of this left to go, and I've got all of this. So if I simply cut this, and rather than putting those two sides together, put another two sides together, then I'd have a whole completely different pattern. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knitting needle. I'm going to do this, take that one off, just one pattern at a time. Just roll over these seams. Just joining it all together. And then with my roller, just roll again, just to make sure it's nice and even and flat. And then with the blunt side of your tissue blade, I'm just pushing around to make sure that all the sides are nicely squared. And then I will repeat with that other pattern. Same again, knitting needle over the joins. And then roll. So 
So here we go, here's some of the finished patterns. So six different patterns um, we made. This was the original one we did, which gave us those two. And then rather than putting that bit towards the top, I just chopped myself another piece off our initial cane. And rather than putting say, that bit towards the top, I put that bit towards the top, cut myself and put two bits together, which gave me that, which gave those two patterns. And then lastly, I put this bit towards the top, pressed it smaller at the bottom, put the two slices together, and that gave me that, which gave me those two patterns. So lots of different patterns, and that's just the start. You can carry on making more patterns if you want to. But I hope you enjoyed that one. It's just a very simple um, little kaleidoscope cane using a basic Skinner blend and then a couple of other colours inserted. So the reason I'm doing this is to just give you all more confidence to go out and have a play and have a go and do things yourselves and hopefully that's done that. If you have enjoyed watching don't forget to um, like if that's okay and subscribe because I do appreciate it when everyone subscribes. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.